Hey guys, welcome back to Sparkfin Homestead. My name is Krista. We have another fun canning project today. I'm hoping to actually get three products made today. I purchased this box of apples right here at my local Amish market yesterday for $12. Because most of the Amish are actually closing up this weekend, a lot of them are just letting a lot of their produce go for really cheap. This is the most perfect time for me to go and stock up on anything that I did not get a good harvest of. I don't have sweet potatoes that I grow myself, so I may go and stock up on some of those. Also, I didn't have a super good pepper harvest this year, like for the sweet bell peppers. I don't need very much but if I can pick up a box for five dollars at the local Amish you bet I'm gonna go and get some of that and put that in my freezer or even try another recipe with it one of you guys actually commented when I made my sun-dried tomato recipe and you said you do that with peppers as well so I may attempt to do like a marinated pepper there is a recipe actually in a new cookbook that I picked up I actually just got this on Amazon and I think I only paid $12 for it. I will leave the link for you guys. It's just a paperback version. I didn't need anything fancy. And they have a recipe in here for a marinated pepper that is safe to can. So I may attempt to do that if I can find some discount peppers at the local Amish. But we have to deal with that $12 box of apples. Some of them are in a little bit of rough shape. There was a reason it was $12. Some of them are definitely... <laughs> A little rough so we have to get these used so my plan today is to can up some apple slices because as you've seen in my pantry tour last week I only have two quarts left uh, or two quarts and one pint left of apple slices so we definitely need to get some of those canned I also want to if we have any extras I want to get a little bit more apple pie filling done because we really love that apple pie filling that was an amazing recipe and then the last thing we're gonna do is with all of the apple peels and the apple cores, we are going to make an apple simple syrup. This I absolutely love to have on hand. I do it with peaches, I do it with strawberries. You can pretty much make a simple syrup with any produce that you're, well, any fruit that you are preserving. It's a really, really good thing to have. And because I make water kefir and kombucha, that is what I use to kind of sweeten it on its second ferment. So we go through quite a bit of it. So I need to get my apple simple syrup restocked. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna start by peeling all of those apples. I don't have one of those fancy apple peelers. I really wish I do. And I know a lot of you have actually said it is a life-changing thing. It makes it so much easier. Easier. I definitely agree with you it would make my life easier but <laughs> I don't have it right now I have been looking I've been looking in every thrift store that I go in to see if I can find one of them hopefully maybe after apple season's done I may find one or I may find something on marketplace I realized I had no veggie stock in my pantry and I had a couple recipes that actually called for it so I made up some veggie stock a couple weeks ago and I did record it for you guys so what I'm gonna do is just include that clip here and just show you how simple and easy it is to actually make a veggie stock and I made it with all scraps. When I peel an onion and a carrot, I always save the scraps from that and throw it into a Ziploc baggie and keep it in my freezer. Every time I do it, I just get that baggie out and just put my scraps in it. When I have a huge collection of scraps, I usually make a broth. So right now on my countertop, I actually have a beef broth going. That will have to get canned tomorrow, but because it's only on its second day. But with the veggie stock, I was able to use a huge bag of my veggie scraps plus some sliced carrots that I already had in my freezer just threw it all into my roasting pot let it cook all day and it was so easy to make I'll show you guys so that's going to come out when we come back we will be finished peeling all of these apples and then we can get started with our first project I forgot to turn the camera on at the beginning part when I was adding everything to my roaster oven, but in here I have that bag of scraps that I was explaining about earlier, just a whole bunch of onion scrap and carrot scraps. I also added a couple teaspoons of minced garlic, some bay leaves, and just like a 
maybe about a tablespoon of peppercorns in there. And then I added some frozen shredded carrots that I always have available in the freezer. And then I went outside and harvested some celery stalks. You can really put whatever you want in your veggie stalks as long as it's veggie. I am loosely using a recipe from the Ball Complete Book of Home Preservation on page 403. And I say loosely because there's a couple of things in there that I didn't necessarily want to add to my broth. I also had a couple of chocolate bell peppers in my fridge that were going bad, so I just threw them in. Here I am just dicing them. You want to add about 28 cups of water to your roaster oven. I pretty much just filled it until it was full. Then what you're going to do is you are going to put the lid on and you are going to bring this to boil over a medium high heat and then you're going to reduce it after it comes to a boil and then you are going to boil it for about two hours. Then you want to uncover it and boil it again for another two hours. Once it gets good and cooked, like you can really smell it being really fragrant, you're going to strain off all of those veggie scraps and then you get to get to the fun point of canning it. It is it is such an easy, easy process to make veggie stock. It only takes one day. It's not like a beef broth where it just has to sit for like 24 hours in order to get good and infused. You can make this in one day. And like I was explaining earlier, you can really just use veggie scraps for this. I gave all of these extra veggie scraps after they were finished cooking, I gave them all to the chickens. Really is a no waste system. I don't throw out the veggie scraps. I use them to make broth. I give them to the chickens and the chickens in turn eat them and give me eggs. So it is really just a full complete system and I just, I love zero waste. I like to double strain my broth. So I first do a quick strain just taking out the big chunks and then I put in like a tea towel or a cheesecloth and just kind of strain it a second time because you can see here it does pick up some things that kind of got through the strainer so I double strain it now that we have it strained we are going to get these added to some clean jars what you want to do is leave one inch of headspace make sure that your jars are hot your broth is hot and your can or water is also hot because you want to make sure that you don't have any jars getting broken and that can sometimes happen if you're using different temperature things. So I filled all of my jars up, left one inch headspace. I am going to pressure can this. This is a pressure canner recipe. Even though it's all vegetables, there are some lower acid vegetables in here, so it is best to pressure can this. I've never attempted to water bath can it, so I don't know if it would be possible and even if it was I don't know what the directions would be for it so I just was cleaning my rooms off I'm going to add my jars lids my rings and just fingertip tight we're going to get these into the pressure canner and we are going to pressure can these because we are doing quarts for 35 minutes if you are doing pints, you would pressure can these for 30 minutes. So after they are done coming down from pressure, they did their full cook time, they came down completely from pressure, we're just going to take them out, we're going to leave them rest here for 12 to 24 hours, but there they are. I can't, I can't believe I've never actually made veggie broth before. Another little quick project that I had to get done was preserving some of our cilantro. Cilantro really does last pretty much through the whole winter here. It can survive pretty low temperatures. I find that January, February, it does die back a little bit just because those nights are pretty consistently cold. So what I decided to do with my cilantro, I do have a dehydrator and I do like to dehydrate it, but I just find that dehydrating cilantro really takes most of the flavor out. So I'm going to attempt to do this little experiment for the first time. I'm taking cilantro, I'm just washing it clean, and then I'm putting it in my food processor and just chopping it up. And then once I get it really finely chopped, I'm just going to lay it in little dices on this parchment lined tray. And then I'm just going to put it in my freezer. You can see here why I can't freeze a lot of stuff. My freezers are packed. All of our meat is involved. So I just really have zero freezer space. So that's why I'm really an advocate for canning. After it is frozen, I like to take them and just put them into a Ziploc baggie. And then anytime I need cilantro, I'll just go into the freezer and just grab some out of the freezer. I'm hoping it's going to be a better alternative to the unflavorful dehydrated cilantro. Another little project that I actually had to get done was harvesting my lemongrass. This is my lemongrass. It is 
so beautiful. This bush was probably about five feet tall. I am going to be growing this from now on. I love, love, love it. It looks so beautiful in the yard, but not only that, but it is just an amazing tea. I like to make a lot of Thai and Asian dishes, and a lot of them do call for lemongrass, so super happy to have that in my freezer. So here I am just harvesting it. It took me a couple attempts to learn how to get it out of the ground. The very first attempt I tried, you can see there that little bush. I just cut it, and then I actually watched some YouTube videos, and apparently you're not supposed to cut it. You're supposed to pull from the bottom. So I ended up doing that, and it worked so much better. This, I had to show you guys, is a grasshopper. It was insanely huge. We have so many grasshoppers here. It kind of panned out a little bit so you can see the size of that thing. They definitely like to eat a lot of my plants, so I'm glad that grasshopper season is done. All right, there is our lemon grass harvest. So the very first one I completely butchered, and that is not how you're supposed to pull them out. You can see, so this is the first one that I did. And you can see how it's all like, you know, not, it's cut down, but then that was one, that was one. There was, I think five in here, and you can't even tell where I harvested some of them because you see, I got right down to the soil. So we're gonna take this all in, process everything. We're gonna freeze the shoots and then cut the leaves up for tea. I also harvested a little bit of mullen out here. So this is my mullen plant right here. And what you wanna do is you wanna kind of find the center. So like that's the center. And these are the leaves that you wanna harvest. Like these ones. You don't want to harvest these big ones, just the tender ones. But I'm going to leave some of these because mullen is a perennial here. And if I leave some next year's plant, it should be a little bit better. But those grasshoppers are just having a heyday with this. When I was doing my research about how to harvest lemongrass, I learned that you can actually save some stalks and use them to plant the following year. So you don't need to restart seeds. Seeds are pretty, they're not super expensive. Like you can get a pack for about $2. But I actually ran into this this year where the seeds were sold out and then finally I was kind of like stocking them and I finally found them like when they became available. So what I'm going to do this year is my attempt is to save these stalks and then replant them next year. And then that way I have a head start to them. So what you want to do is find the stalks that have a good root system on them and then you're just going to cut them I would say maybe about 10 inches long and then just put them in some water and then in a sunny location and just leave them there all winter until you need to plant them next spring. I have had these in the jar now for about two weeks. I think it was about two weeks when I shot this and they are growing. Like they already have major growth on them. So I'm probably going to have to come in and like harvest the greens off of them because the they're just growing so well. So what I'm doing now is just separating the shoots from the actual grass itself. The shoots I want to use for things like soup. I make a delicious tom yum soup and it calls for lemongrass. I'm also going to be doing probably in the next video that I shoot with you guys, I am going to be attempting to make a curry paste and it calls for a lemongrass shoot. So I'm preserving a whole bunch in Preparation of making a whole bunch of canning curry recipes and not only that, but just making some yummy Thai soups. I love, love the lemon flavor and I love what it does to the Asian dishes. So I'm just taking the grass here and just kind of knotting it up a little bit into a bunch and then you're just gonna take these bunches and freeze it. The lemon grass is just as usable as the lemon shoots. It is very, very multi-purpose. You can also use this lemon grass in a tea. So what I'm doing is I'm just finding the ones that have this kind of, I, I let it go a little bit too long outside and some of them you can see here, they're like brown. I'm just cutting those off and just composting those. The lemongrass shoots the, the thick part at the bottom. I'm just going to put them into a Ziploc baggie and throw them into my freezer and then that way when I need them, I can just take them out. And then all of the grass part that I cut off there, I'm just going to use that into a tea. I'm just going to leave them in this bowl and let them just kind of air dry and then I'll be able to use them for tea. So let's get back to our apple project. 
Okay, so you got them all peeled. I've decided to slice some up like this, and then I've also decided to leave some kind of whole like this. It's halfway me being lazy and halfway me wanting to have different varieties different slices for different things. This is our scrap bowl right here. These apples were really, really soft. I don't wanna end up canning them because I think they'll just turn to complete mush. So we are going to use those to make our apple scrap with. This is all the peelings, some of the cores. I did compost some of it and give my chickens some also, so this is not all of them. This is what we're going to use to make our simple syrup. These slices and those. So what we have to do is we gotta make a simple syrup to boil these apples in. They have to boil for five minutes. You do not need to do this step. This is what this book, again, I am using this USDA canning book and this recipe is on page two seven. So chapter two, page seven. And then I'm going to use the simple syrup recipe from this ball canning book. It is on page 140. Now this book does have a simple syrup recipe also. It is almost exactly the same. So it really doesn't matter which one you're using. I just honestly don't wanna be flipping back and forth for pages. So I have two books open. I don't know, but that's what we're going with. So let's get started with making the simple syrup and then we will get these put on the stove top and get these started to cook. Again, they have to cook for about five minutes. Oh, the other thing I also did was I heated up some quart size jars. I can only fit seven quart size jars in my canner at a time. So we'll start with seven. I may end up getting my pressure canner out and then we'll also get that going because I can water bath in that one also so that we can do twice as much. So as I was saying before, you can raw pack these, which just means avoiding, like not doing this step and just putting water or light syrup over top of them. But it does say that that usually results in a mushy product. So it does suggest to do this blanching of them. So we're going to do, you have an option of doing a very light, light or medium syrup. So I think what we'll do is we will come in with a very light syrup because I don't want too much sugar because apples already are super sweet to begin with. Um, I'm just doing this as a little extra sweetness because the majority of these are gonna be used for fried apples or like an apple crisp. That's usually what I end up using my canned apples for. All right, so to do the, actually the Ball Blue Book has three different stages. It has an ultra light, extra light, light, and then a medium. So what do we say, light? I'm gonna actually compare these. I didn't want to flip pages and now I'm flipping. Light. See the ball blue book says in order to make a light syrup you use two and a quarter cups of sugar and this one says in order to make a light syrup you use one and a half cups of sugar. So let's actually stick with this USDA one. Ball is a little bit too sweet so we'll put this book away. So just forget what I said about using this book. We're just going to use the USDA one. All right, so how much water do we need? We need five and three quarters cup of water per one and a half cups of sugar. And that is for a nine pint load. Oh, we're doing the seven quart load. I take that back. Okay, so because we're doing a seven quart load, it gives you exact measurements for exactly what we're actually canning today. So we need to have nine cups of water and two and a quarter cups of sugar. I wonder if maybe if that's what Ball Book was also directing as well. Not sure. It says that this syrup works really well in very sweet fruit. Try a small amount first to see if your family likes it. But then below for the medium syrup, it says it works well with sweet apples, sweet cherries, berries, and grapes. So do we do the medium? No, I'm still feeling light. I'm still feeling light. Okay. So I don't think that we're going to be able to fit all of the apples into one of these because again, this is, this is my biggest stock pot that I own. I think it is only, what is it? Eight quarts. Eight quarts is my biggest stock pot I own. I really need to invest in getting a bigger stock pot because this is what happens when I go to do these projects is I end up having pots everywhere because I can't fit everything into one pot. So we'll do it in batches. That's what we're going to have to do. So let's do this one first because this is the biggest pot and we will get nine cups of water in this pot. 
going to have to double up because this is only an eight cup water thing. This is filtered water also that I'm getting out of my fridge. Okay, eight cups. I need one more cup in there. Nine cups. Okay, so we need two and a quarter cups. I'm going to turn this on on a medium low heat. just reading here because I want to see how many cups of apples it says is approximately a quart. Okay, so an average of 12 and a quarter cup pounds is needed per canner load of nine pints. So a bushel weighs 48 pounds and yields 16 to 19 quarts. And I think what we had there was a bushel. Maybe half a bushel, I think. Okay, so 19 pounds is needed for seven quarts, which is what my canner fits. So we need to measure out 19 pounds of um, apples. There's probably a way simpler way of doing this than measuring out everything. You can just eyeball it, but I guess I just have time to spare, which I don't. That's a, that's a joke. I don't have time to spare. I'm just maybe doing it the difficult way. I don't know. Just stirring this sugar just to make sure it doesn't burn. This is what I've decided to do instead of measuring it. I am taking a quart jar and I'm just going to pack it with apples. And dump it in here. So I have two quarts in here so far. I don't know how accurate this measuring system is going to be. I'm also trying to dirty every single bowl in my house apparently. I've got five in here so far. I think six. This is one I don't want to use. I think these will shrink also when we um, blanch them. I'm going to cut up one more apple. I like. I'm going to cut up probably about two more pieces because I don't want to use these ones. These are those really soft apples and I think they're going to just turn to mush. But we are still going to use them. We're going to use them in the syrup. I don't know what variety these ones are. This mix this bushel was a mixture of all different kinds of apples so I don't know which ones the soft ones are okay that's good we're gonna bring this to a light boil and then we're gonna add our apple slices in here and cook them for five minutes okay this is to a very light boil so we are gonna add our apples in and I'm gonna try not to burn myself Okay, I set my timer for five minutes, so we're gonna lightly boil this. The other thing I decided to do while I was waiting for that simple syrup to come to a boil is I decided just to slice the rest of my apples. I was honestly being lazy by leaving them some like not sliced up. I honestly, this is how I use my apples. They're already sliced. So I put in that extra five minute time just to slice them now instead of slicing them when I'm opening the jar. So I just, Get it all done now. So we have these ones sliced. So this should be seven quarts in this pot. This should be another seven quarts in here. My apples are actually sitting in a water lemon juice solution. That way they don't brown as easily. So that's what they're mixed in here. So I'm gonna leave these in here until this is done. I put my water bath canner also back on the stove top just to bring it back up to temperature. My jars are in there so I will take them out when those are done because then we'll have to pack the jars. So we're gonna wait the five minutes. Well, actually we only have two minutes and some left. So we'll come back once those are done. Our timer just went off. So we're gonna take the jars out now and then also take that those apples off of the heat. Probably just actually take these off first. You're gonna have too much water in here. I'm also canning these in a wide mouth mason jar. I prefer doing wide mouth mason jars because it's easier to get stuff in and out of. I save my regular mouth jars usually for sauces and things like broth because I just pour them. Anything that I have like chunkier stuff in, I love wide mouth mason jars. Okay, let's get to fill these up. It says to leave half inch head space. Definitely think we should have made more apples. 
pulse because this is not going to be enough to fill seven quarts. So I may get another pot going and we'll quickly boil up another, another batch of apples just in case this isn't enough. All right, so my measuring system was way off. <laughs> Should have just did the weight. So we are just going to fill the um, simple syrup in this and then we're gonna get some more apples going. In the meantime, I'm just gonna keep these in my water bath canner and just keep them warm so that I can just quickly get those other ones done. Just adding the simple syrup now to half inch headspace. I have my debubbler here, which is a chopstick. And we're just gonna debubble and then readjust the headspace if needed. I'm just topping up this simple syrup. I'm gonna add a couple more cups of water in here and probably another cup of sugar. Okay, we are gonna get the rings on these, the lids and the rings. So because we're using a sugar, I am going to clean these rooms really, really good. And I'll put my new canning jar lids on there. Put the rings on till fingertip tight. I turn my water bath canner down really, really, really low. So this is not boiling water. These are fine just to kind of sit in here because I don't want them to cool down too much while we're waiting for this to boil. So these guys will just chill out in here until they're ready to water bath can just to keep them warm. I can tell I already have too much water in this, so I'm gonna have to empty some of that out. Okay, we got the rest of them done. We're gonna put them in the water bath canner and we are gonna turn this up now. Get these to a boil. Definitely need to empty water out of here. Want to make sure we have an inch of water or two inches of water above here. Just cleaning my counters now because this is like a huge sticky mess. See in here? We have some left. I have a fun project I want to do with this. So this is going to be a complete experiment. I want to take some of these apples and immerse and blend them until they're like a, actually we'll probably use a food processor. We're going to immerse and blend them until they're like an applesauce. I think I'm going to open one of my cranberry juices. Come with me. Let's go and grab it. I can this in May, so we can definitely use this. So when I use my cranberry juice, I did explain a little bit of this on my pantry tour, but I just drain off the cranberries. So what I'm going to do with these cranberries is I'm going to put them in with the apples and then I am going to try to make a fruit leather with it, like an apple cranberry fruit leather. I'm gonna put the sauce on some parchment paper in my dehydrator, and we're gonna see if we can make some fruit leather with it, because I honestly probably only have maybe two quarts in here, and instead of me running a full canner load, I just wanna experiment and make some fruit leather with it. I think that would be really, really yummy, like a fruit roll up. So let's try to do that. I'm just getting my food processor out and then we'll strain up this cranberry juice and then put the apples. I'm gonna strain the apples as well. This is essentially simple syrup that we have in here. So I might end up incorporating that into the simple syrup that we make because I don't wanna waste that liquid in there. That's good infused sugar water. So let's get these drain first. I rinse this out also. So let's strain these apples. make our simple syrup. So we'll just start with this as a base. All right, went and got my dehydrator tray. I also had to do up a little bit of those dishes because I have such a small workspace, I need to do dishes. So we have 
all of our ingredients in here. Bring you guys a touch bit closer here. I don't know what I'm doing. This is an experiment. Just push this down. Cause we want to have like a sauce and you see the consistency of this right now it needs to, I could use my Vita mix as well. Like my blender, it would work probably 10 times faster, but this is what was closest to me. <laughs> Pretty good consistency. I want to go a little bit longer than that though. That's pretty good. Give it a taste. Mm. That's yummy just by itself without even making a fruit leather. That's a delicious applesauce. All right, I'm wondering if we need to strain this. No, because then it would make it like an apple juice, wouldn't it? It's still pretty crunchy. I don't think it's gonna get much thinner than that without us actually straining it. We'll just try to do it this way. Remember, experiment. We're experimenting. Yeah, we're gonna have to straighten that because that's not gonna make a fruit leather. Okay, I got my vintage food mill out here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this through the food mill and then hopefully it'll help smoothen it out and then it will spread a little bit easier. Because right now it's too clumpy and my food processor isn't really doing quick work of it. Shoulda took the time and got my Vita mix out. I'm getting my Vita mix out because this is not, <laughs> it's still really clumpy. Okay, let me go get my Vita mix. Again, let's see how many dishes we can dirty today. In the meantime, this is now come to a boil, so we need to start our timer for 20 minutes. I almost forgot I was actually canning something. <laughs> okay, let's get this Vita mixed. Should have did this in the first place instead of being lazy. Perfect. Literally two seconds it took. Wonder if there's a trick to keep it in even consistency. Bench scraper. It seems to be helping doing it a little bit more even than the back of the spatula. Okay, let's go and take these and put them in the dehydrator. I'm pretty sure my dehydrator actually has a fruit setting. Let's see. Okay. Uh, yeah, it says fruits and fruit rolls and we need to have it at 135. And we will put this in for, let's go 12 hours. Okay, there we go. We got the three put in there. So fingers crossed that experiment turns out. Our canning jars have about three more minutes before we have to take them off. Now to get started on that simple syrup, it takes two hours to simmer. I just checked the weight of all of our apple cores and everything. I will leave the recipe linked for you guys um, to make this uh, simple syrup. Just gotta find it here. So it says seven ounces of apple skins. So I figured it out, I have 6.2 ounces here. 6.2 pounds. We don't need that much simple syrup. So I think what I'm gonna do is give half of these scraps to the chickens. I can turn these scraps into eggs. They're not gonna get wasted either way. So we'll use about half of them and then we'll like maybe five times the recipe. The other problem that I have with even five times in the recipe is it calls for four cups of water to the seven ounces of skins. You, you've seen there, I have an eight quart stock pot. I can't, I can't make that much. So we'll see how much we can actually get to fit into that stock pot. I really, because I'm doing a lot of preserving right now, I really need to invest in a good heavy bottom, like 18 quart stock pot. I think that would make my life easier. <laughs> 
Anyways, we're gonna work with what we have. We have an eight quart stock pot, so I think we can maybe three times the recipe. We'll double check and see, but it has to cook for two hours. It's four o'clock. I still need to get supper started. I'm making chili tonight, so yeah. And I need a, I need a element and I need a pot to make chili in. Oh, there's our timer. Let's go and get those off. All right, I've never had this happen before. We have floating jars. I'm wondering if it's because the apples are so light. I don't know. We'll see, maybe I have a broken jar in there. You need to let them rest five minutes before you take them out of there, but that is not looking promising. Hopefully, hopefully they're fine. Okay, I think I know what happened. These lids 100% failed because I just picked one up to check and the jar is almost completely empty of liquid. So those lids did not seal in that. So I am going to have to recan it looks like maybe only two of them actually sealed. So I am going to take these out. I'm going to let them cool down. I'm going to take them out and then I'm going to add some of that light syrup that we made. I'm not going to use that in the simple syrup. I'm going to reserve that and then just top these up once they kind of cool down a little bit because I don't want the jars to break by putting a colder syrup in them. All lids, I tell you. I have been using other companies lids for a while and I now have to use my ball lids and I got almost all of these jars in here did not seal. I am so frustrated with that company. I am getting a lot of no seals at all with their canning jar lids. I was using, and I am not an affiliate, I am not sponsored, I was using four jar lids and I had 100% seal rate with them. I was debating today whether I was going to order them or not and now I'm definitely going to put an order through because I can't waste all of that time canning and then having this happen. Like none of these jars actually seal. They all, all of the water, all of the juice siphoned out and it is all in there. So frustrating way to waste of time. So let's get the simple syrup started first of all because that takes two hours to do. I will deal with this when it cools down, because I need to actually cool down right now as well, because that is very, very frustrating. Ugh. Okay, we're gonna get started with this simple syrup. We're gonna move on to something else. So I have four times the amount of water in here that I need. So I'm going to measure out or weigh out these and then put four times the amount in there. I'm gonna get the cores out because I really don't want apple seeds in here. I really just want the peelings. My hands are clean, don't worry. I don't want them to like make it taste weird. I actually ended up five times in this. So this is, it fits all in the eight stock, in the eight quart stock pot. So what we need to do is over high heat, we need to bring this to a boil and then turn it down to a simmer and simmer for two hours. After two hours, we come and strain it and then add the sugar to it. So I'll bring you guys back when we um, get to that point. I am going to deal with my other canning jars right now. Picking these out because I don't want the apple peel, or I don't want the apple seeds in here. I am going to go out and make my chickens very happy and give them this. I can definitely make like an apple scrap vinegar with this or I could make like an apple scrap jelly. Those are the two things that I know to make with apple scraps. But to be honest with you, that whole issue that I just had with those, that and then I still got to get supper started. I'm just being realistic with myself. Even if I put these in the freezer to use them later, it's just going to take up freezer space and it's another project that I have to do later that... I don't think that I'm gonna have time to do. So these are gonna to go to my chickens. I'm gonna turn these into eggs. So again, not wasting them. I am still using them. So we will be back when that is at the next stage. Okay, I've had an opportunity to kind of chill out and calm down. So what I ended up doing was recanning them. I took the lids off of them and you know what? Most of them actually were sealed. There was definitely pressure in there when I popped it, but the fact that there was that much siphoning and they were floating, I was not safe with putting them on my canning shelf. So we're going to recan them. I am going to use my pressure canner to can them because it has a little bit it's a little bit taller so I can get a little bit more water on the top of it. 
I had just enough, like literally not even a drop left of that simple syrup that we made. So I was able to top them all up with the appropriate amount. These are probably going to be really, really mushy apples because we're processing them for 40 minutes instead of the regular 20. So I'm thinking that these are probably going to end up probably being like an applesauce. If I open a jar to make like apple crisp and they're really, really mushy, I might make more of that fruit leather. So they're not going to go to waste either way, but we are going to attempt to can them again. And hopefully, fingers crossed, they work this time. That is so frustrating. I have honestly never, ever had that happen before where they were all floating. That was such a weird, weird thing. But we're gonna get them on here now. We're gonna get this to a boil and we're gonna get them canning again for 20 minutes and then we're gonna move on. <laughs> Things like this happen. They just, I don't know, it's really weird, but it is what it is and we're gonna move on from it and we're gonna make do with whatever the outcome is. <laughs> okay, no floaters. <laughs> That's good. These apples are probably complete mush, most likely applesauce, but that's okay. We did it again. So this is starting to boil down a lot. So this has got to go until it's 530 now. So this probably will be ready to go on to the next step around seven o'clock, which is we're going to strain it and then add some sugar and then cook it from there. I still have to do a little bit of research on the canning times for that because I'm not, I can't remember last time I did it, what I canned it at. I don't have a recipe for it. So I'm going to double check and do some research on that. I'm also going to get some supper started, but that you will see on the what we eat in a week video. So I will come back with you when we can move on to the next stage with that simple syrup. All right, we're gonna get this simple syrup stuff strained. So I take it off the heat. This is what it looks like now. So we're just gonna strain this. After you get the apple strained, you wanna add the liquid back to the pan and you wanna measure it first because you have to add equal amount of sugar to liquid ratio. So it is one and a half cups of sugar per four cups of water. So I added a lot of sugar to this. So you're gonna place that back over a medium heat and cook until the sugar is dissolved. You do not want to boil this because it will cause it for a very, very thick, simple syrup. Now, if you don't wanna can this, you can just let it come to room temperature and bottle and store in the refrigerator. It should be good for about three weeks if stored in the refrigerator, but we're gonna can this. So I actually found another canning recipe online. I have left both of these recipes linked for you in the video description. So you're going to put this into hot jars because that syrup is really, really hot. You need to make sure your jars are hot and you need to make sure your water bath canner is also hot. We're gonna leave a quarter inch headspace. We're gonna make sure we wipe these rims really, really good because this is a super sticky syrup. Once you get the rims cleaned, we're gonna add our lids and rings fingertip tight and we are gonna process these in a water bath canner for 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes, we're gonna turn the canner off, let it cool down for five minutes and then take them out and let them rest. We are done, done our projects. I took the water bath canner that has the simple syrup in it off the heat. So that is just chilling there for five minutes. We're gonna take it off and add it to, with our apples. So our apples, most of them sealed, except for this one. So, hear the difference? This one doesn't push in, but you can just hear the, Different. So I know that one didn't seal. So I'm gonna put this one in the fridge and then maybe make some apple crisp tomorrow with it. But the rest of them all sealed. Just turn this off so you can hear me. This is almost pretty much done. Look at it. I came in and actually tried a little bit of it. You kind of see it here. In fact, I actually think it is done. So I am gonna take those and cut them in little strips and then store them in a mason jar and then I'll be able to snack on them. They're just like a fruit roll. I tried a little bit and they are delicious. I'm so happy that worked out because if these <laughs> apples are mush, that is what they're gonna become is a fruit roll up because that's a really, really yummy treat. So that is it for today. That was a really, really busy day. We got three projects done out of that box of apples. Tomorrow I'm probably gonna end up canning up some 
high filling because I have a little bit more apples in the fridge that I need to get used up. But I actually showed you on a couple videos before how I make that pie filling. That recipe that I did last time was really, really good. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope you have a great day or night whenever you're watching this and I will see you on the next video. Bye guys.